I want to say thank you to the church group. Uh, ever, everybody, Wednesday night, a lot of the people cleaned up because we've had a funeral. One of our brothers passed away, Brother uh, Fisk, Ronnie Fisk passed away. We had his, not funeral, but celebration because he had made things right with God. And it was, it was a really joyous time. A bunch of his family was here and our church really showed out. There was more food than, than everybody could eat, including our own church folks. And enough, uh, uh, there was enough sweets back there to send a normal man into diabetic coma. <laughs> that, that means you didn't have to eat it all, but you could eat some of it. And there was some leftovers. Very good. So thank you girls for being so kind. Thank you everybody that helped uh, make sure that after our services Wednesday that everything was good for the, the get together Friday, I want to say thank you so much for that. It's a joy. We have, we have visitors with us today. We're so proud to have you. The sermon I'm going to preach this morning is a common thing that people don't never know unless they know Christ. And it's something that's preached here regular, just out of the scripture. But as I was looking over the word of God, my, my soul was just pinned to these passages. And so I want to bring them to you. And, and please don't leave without letting God have his way. In Romans chapter 8, we're going to start reading in verse number 1. We'll read eight verses. This is where everybody wants to get. They want to get to where they're not condemned. But the only way there is to quit acting out. Thank you for one. Because <laughs> by nature, we act, we're we actor outers. We act outside the realm of grace. But to have no condemnation, we've got to act inside the realm of grace. So there's an outside that goes to hell for eternity. There's an inside that goes to heaven for eternity. We don't want to beat you up. I just want to make sure that you know and you're knower where you stand with God. <clears throat> No condemnation, and notice he very clearly puts this out, to them which are where? In. in Christ Jesus. He didn't say in the assemblies of God. That's the church order we're running under here. But in Christ Jesus is in what this Bible teaches and says. This gives the clarity. Don't matter what Danny Williams does, says nothing. This Bible, supreme authority. Amen. So if we walk in Christ, we're on the inner circle. How many wants to get on the inner circle? Do you remember in society when you was growing up going to school and uh, there were some places they wouldn't let you in? It was like, <laughs> well, maybe y'all didn't have it, but we had, the, we had the goat ropers on one side of our world and we had the hippies on the other side. So if it's the long hair, and you come over to our deal, you're just going to get your hair cut and maybe some other stuff uh, happened to you. But if you went over there, it'd be the same way. Well, so... Which circle do you want in? You want in there with the devil? Where you can act up and go the wrong way? Or do you want to get in there and get right? Woo, I love when you shout now. So who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And these are the two things that, that's the difference between eternity with Christ and eternity in hell. If you walk after your flesh, which is your normal will. It's you do what you want to do because you're selfish by nature. I've been there myself. I've been very selfish. I was telling the guys today, oh Jake was working on us today on the on the marriage. On the marriage. I wish the women could have been here. <laughs> but I understood they they got some of it in their glass. Because marriage is not a one way street. It takes okay. Well, I can't redo really that. But anyway, I tell him I like to tore my own marriage up before our first year because I was a very selfish person. I couldn't see that. Everybody else was selfish, but not me. <laughs> I told him I was working, you know, long hours at the feedlot. And I mean, when you make a lot of money, like I was $1.75 an hour. <laughs> yeah. But as long as you can be around horses and cows. <clears throat> There's a go there. <laughs> and I'd come home, and Connie, she's taking, she'd been there all day, you know, was in a little apartment there at Lubbock. And I mean, I couldn't hardly stand. You could hear the people the next door. I'd never been around that fighting. 
I never heard my mom and dad raise their voice, so that was, a, that was a crazy world to me. I couldn't hardly wait to get in the pickup and go back to the feed line. At least a cow just do so many things, and a horse the same way. But people, you can't tell about them. <laughs> And so about six or seven months into our marriage, I, I could see, I didn't know what was wrong. It couldn't be me. <laughs> anyway, I got saved. And one of the first things I wanted to do when I got saved was go to my wife and say, baby, I am so sorry because I see something I never saw before, that I'm, a very, I'm selfish. In our marriage, she didn't hate me, I didn't hate her, but it just... There's just a friction that the devil brings on because if you just do your own will all the time, it's because you're crooked. Yeah. I love when you shout now. There's a word for that in Spanish. Somebody tell me. Choeco. <laughs> That's it. And so the, the battle. I know what the battle is. The battle is between the flesh. That's the you, the selfish you, and the spirit that says you need to lay self down and do God's will. When that happened, it pulled me out of the drunkard's world. That's where I was. It took me away from the dance hall. That's where I was. It took me out of the nightclub. The last time I was in the nightclub was in the Cotton Club at Lubbock, Texas. And one of our best friends says, where in the world are y'all going to do the old year out and the new year in? I said, we've got to do some boot scooting and some buckle shining. And he said, where are you going? I said, we're going to the cotton club. He said, he was a police officer. He said, oh, he said, we, we take dead people out of there all the time. <laughs> so, how many still in the building? But you know what? I went anyway. And so, to beat, the, to beat the devil, we've got to have somebody to help us. And his name is Jesus. Would you say Jesus with me? If you serve him and follow him, he roots the filth out of your life like he did mine. When I got saved, I was never the same man. That was my last time to ever be drunk or high or except on the Holy Ghost. I've danced in the spirit before and spoke in tongues and shouted and run like crazy, but it wasn't cause of alcohol. Our marijuana. It was because I'd found me a new way in this name. Now I didn't take Prozac to get that done. Just a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you about the flesh has a voice of its own. In verse number two. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has done something. I didn't understand that scripture until I got saved, but I, wouldn't, I wasn't saved because I was assemblies of God. I was religious right up till I got saved, and I lost my religion and found Jesus. Yeah. And to this day, I've lived right there. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and of death. Verse number three, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned. He condemned sin in the flesh. He still condemns sin in the flesh. We leave the sin and business when we come to Christ. Verse number four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled where? In us that we could become righteous? Us low downers? Yes. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. I'm going to the cotton club, don't care what you say. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. I wanted to go somewhere else when I got saved. I wanted to go to church. They never browbeat me about going to church. I went because I love going to church. I love being around the things of God. And to that, this day, it's a joy. Woo, verse number six. For to be carnally minded is... Death, but to be spiritually minded is life and speech. You see the circles, the circle of Christ inside, the outside of that? You can see it there, verse number eight. So then, they that are in the flesh, I can stay at the cotton club till Jesus comes and go to hell, and I can never please God there. I've got to change my way, and that's what changed me. Woo, Lord, 
We need you. We need you so terribly, God, to help us every day recognize that we have a choice and that nothing, nothing can chain down a person that belongs to Jesus. There's nothing he cannot or she cannot be free from. And all because of the power of God. It doesn't matter how long the devil has had his way in our life. Lord, when we get to you, if we follow your prescription, we'll never be the same person again by the grace of God. Lord, we pray this prayer over this group of believers today and those that don't know you, that they'd never be the same from this day forward in the name of Jesus. In Romans chapter 7, we're not going to read that passage, but in Romans chapter 7, it talks about the conflict. And uh, Brother Jake was dealing with divorce. Divorce only comes because of conflict. And what separated us from God was conflict. Our will against the will of God. That's a battle we can't win because that takes us to the wrong place forever. And so chapter 7 deals with the conflict between right and wrong. It doesn't fix it. It just gets it out there to where you can see it. And it says something like this. When I want to do good, something else. Evil is present. Right now in this service, the devil is walking around. Yeah, he's here. He wouldn't be the devil if he wouldn't. He wants, he wants to keep your attention off of God. He wants to keep you from making things right. He wants, you to, he wants to keep you from being eternally saved to being eternally lost. And that happens in the church house. He's about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But if you put your attention on the law of Christ, he cannot overcome where you're looking. He can't get there. And you're, you're bonded with him. So this chapter 7 does not give the cure, but chapter 8 does. Chapter 8 says that there's no condemnation if we walk in Christ. So with that being said, I want to ask a question and answer it. Who will miss the rapture? We're getting close, friends, to the return of Christ. Who, who's going to make it and who will not make it to heaven? You, you can't read your Bible without knowing in the percentage level, not very many people go to heaven in the percentage level. And here's, here's the truth that the Bible says, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that in the last days, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. What is the percentage there? Eight, Eight people out of the entire world go with Christ, the rest of the world goes to hell. Men, women, boys, and girls. That's, that's what the scripture says. They become a seed of evildoers. That's what's spoken in the Bible. If you go on to Sodom and Gomorrah, that's what Jesus says. In the last days, it will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at our, look at our world today, what's going on. Sodomy has become a norm in America the world I grew up in didn't even know what it meant if it hadn't had a Bible. And now it's in, every, it's in every family group. Maybe not in your personal family, but it's out there, close, it's out there. If it's not, it's trying to look in and get in. It's not that that particular person can't be saved, but it's been allowed by a lax and self-willed governing people. And Christ comes to, to break that up. So who, who will miss heaven? Or miss the rapture. If you look at Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 3. It gives us a real clear picture here. And it's, it, one word is used that really magnifies those that will and those that want. This is, this is Matthew. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 3. And said, verily I say unto you. Except you be. Here's the word. Except you be converted. And become as a little child or little children. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now becoming a little child may seem strange to you. And you may be 80 years old and wonder why do I need to do that. Because our will is conformed to his will. And instead of us being arrogant and going our way now wherever he goes we go with him. Just like a little child. We follow Jesus. We follow Jesus, so help me God. Whatever happens, we follow Jesus. Conversion is an incredible thing because as little children, ye shall, notice this word, become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he's showing that there's some people that's not going up. 
They may be in the church right here. But if you're so persistent on getting your way and your will, you will never make it to heaven because conversion breaks that iron, stiff, sinewed neck. And that forehead, it's like an adamant stone. Now, conversion, I want to put it in form. Okay, I better get my word right here. You won't even know what I'm talking about. I want to put it in form, F-A-R-M. I know you couldn't tell what I was talking about. It. I want to put it in the farm language. <laughs> I was raised around cotton strippers all my life. The early cotton strippers we had was called tail strippers. They went on an old tractor that we didn't use the rest of the year. We'd just get them all cranked up because putting a tail stripper on is like getting a root canal. You don't want to do it but one time in your life. <laughs> So we'd shop them with a welder, shop them old case strippers onto our tractors, and then we didn't take them off. We'd leave it on that tractor. Then they come out with basket strippers that you put on your tractor, and they were easier. You, they was easier to take off and put on. We used them. The basket caught the cotton, not the trailer behind the deal. And then they come out with something that I never ran. So you can tell this is going to be back in the, and just, just after Noah got off the ark. <clears throat> They come out with what was called a self uh, stripper. It was a, it, yeah, self propel, a self propel stripper. They come out, the first ones just had two, two rows, just like all the normal strippers, it was just two rows at a time. How many of the strippers today, the eight rows, some 10, I mean, they're incredible. They'll run their self. You sit up there and they'll stay on the road by themselves. We didn't have that, uh, no cab. The ones we was on was no cab. You look like dirt when you come in. <laughs> Just a thick layer of dirt. Yeah, we had our own makeup. <laughs> All you could see was our eyes. <laughs> I was going down the road one day, and after the, the four-row strippers come out, that means they would take four rows at a time, and they was headed into the eight-row strippers. I seen this farmer, and farmers are crazy, <clears throat> but he had had this real good two-row cotton stripper, and he had tucked the row units off of it. And he had backed it up to his irrigation well and hooked that stripper to the irrigation well. It's been converted. <laughs> it was awesome to look at that little stripper. He took the basket off of it, the row units off of it, but it's got that diesel motor. And that diesel motor is now pumping the water for his water well, for his water and his cotton. That's conversion. Now, you may never see that again. I only saw it once myself. But friends, there's a lot of people that's never seen a Christian. They've heard about them. They've seen people in the church, but they watch them when they get outside and they go right back to the same filthy language, the same vulgar attitude, the same broken relationship because they're not Christians. They've said it, but they have not been converted. And this, this scripture right here, he said, Verily I say unto you, that's me too. Except you be converted and become as little children. That means you, you're leadable. You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that means me as a preacher, if I get up here and do this just because I think I'm good and I love to hear my voice and all that stuff, guess what? One of these days the Lord will clip me and say, son, I loved you. I tried to save you, but you were so caught up in your own deal. You slipped off away from me. You don't belong. You can't come in. There, there's, a, there's a passage in the Bible over and over that talks about sliding back or backsliding. That, that's where I would have to go to miss heaven. As long as my conversion keeps me like the little stripper pumping water for Jesus, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. Woo! It's going to work. In Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. I'm talking to you about who will miss the rapture. The ones that miss the rapture will be the ones that their conversion has not stayed intact. Here in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. Thank you, Brother Rasmus, for working on that computer. Them computers sometimes are almost demon-possessed. <clears throat> I told you the devil, he fights you. You ever been to a place where they're trying to get the microphones and stuff straightened out and they're going, eh, woo, woo, and all everything. That's, that's not God's way. That's just the old devil trying to tear stuff up. And the Lord said unto Simon, this is Simon Peter. You know, he was kind of tough minded, good, good man, but he kind of had his own, own route sometimes. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, 
Now these are the disciples of Christ walking with Jesus and look what he's saying. Jesus is saying, Satan hath desired to have you. And friends, you can look at yourself in the mirror or you can look at me and you can know that that same word has been spoken about us. The devil wants you. He wants your marriage. He wants your way. He wants your virginity. He wants your life. He wants your health. He gives up at nothing. He, he would love that this precious sister back here has been preaching for more years than I'm old nearly. He, he'd love to have her testimony. But you know what? He's not going to get it. I asked her just a few Sundays ago, sister, are you ready to throw in the towel? She said, no! <laughs> Instead of getting further away, we're getting closer, aren't we, sister? Oh, thank God for the hope we have. Yes. <clears throat> Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Now, sifting is a really crucial thing because it takes the outside off and there's nothing left there but just the grain. And he wants to, he said, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make chaff out of Peter. That's what he's going to be. Look at this next verse. But, here's the hope we have in Christ. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Friends, if Peter needed the Lord's prayer, you better know you need it. And I've got to know, when I'm studying, praying, believing God, I've got to know that this is not about me. This is about the Lordship of Jesus coming. He said, I'm praying for you and my prayer is this. When thou art, look at this word. Here's the word. This is the word that makes a difference. When thou art converted. And Peter's like, what are you talking about? I'm your best disciple. Whoa. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The Lord sees the shakenness of the human being that we need God's hand on us so desperately. Look at the next verse. And he said unto him, Lord, I told you, didn't I? I'm ready. There ain't nothing out there I can't take. <laughs> you better look out, friend. If those words come out of your mouth, you better run to the altar and say, God, help me regrade myself and recognize that with Jesus, without him, I can't do nothing. I've got to have him. Friends, you may be talented to death, but your talent won't get you to heaven. You may be a beautiful man or a uh, beautiful woman, ugly man. <laughs> Whatever you are, I got a few smiles there. It's hard to see a beautiful man, ain't it, brother? Man, <laughs> say goodness. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> He said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to the prison or to death. Whoa. Our, our brag gets us in trouble easy. You know what? The devil stepped up and said, watch this. He's setting a trap for Peter, and Peter does not know this. He doesn't recognize it. And friends, sometimes after your greatest victory is your greatest trial. You don't have to fail. Just because the trial has come, you don't have to fail. You can say, you know what? God converted me from my will to his will. Did you know there's AC and DC current? You've been on DC long enough. <laughs> Let's get on that upper current. <laughs> yes, his name is Jesus. Get over there where you belong. He can't see that right now, but in the same chapter, this is what boggles me. If you go down to the same chapter, chapter 22 of Luke, and we're gonna look at, uh, I think it's verse 62, if I can find my place here. 22, verse 56 Jesus has already been taken. This is the night in Luke 22 is the night that Jesus is fixing, is fixing to be taken. He's going to the garden to pray. He goes pray. He goes and prays. The disciples go to sleep. While they're sleeping, the people come to take Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus is taken and Peter's following him afar off. But he follows him down there to the judgment hall. And uh, he's standing there. He is the disciple of Christ. He's the one that says, I'm ready. I can handle it. A certain maid, not a man, a woman. Help me. A certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire. She just looked at him. Earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. Oh, Peter's hair stands straight up because he knows they're going to kill Jesus. And he thinks, 
If they know I was with him, they're going to kill me too. And so Peter done something he didn't think he'd ever do. Look at the next verse. He denied him. Friends, you may not have verbally with your mouth denied Christ, but if you can't stand your ground in a secular world, you are denying him openly with silence. If you know Jesus and you belong to him, you cannot deny him. No. But Peter has got a wreck. Do you remember what the Lord said? I'm praying for you so that when you are converted. That's a powerful word. He denied him saying, woman, I know him not. You got the wrong man. And so he said, you mean you're not the Christian? You're not the Peter? I ain't. I don't know him. That's pretty strong words. Look at verse number 58. After a little while, another saw him. I don't know if this was a woman or a man. Don't make no difference. And said, thou art also of them. We can tell you was with them. And Peter said, man. Yeah, we got it now. One woman, one man. I, he said, man, I am not he. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not part of that bunch. Look at verse number 59. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed. Another said, yep. We watched him three and a half years. He's been with Jesus. We've seen him over and over in the boat down at Jerusalem. At some, we, we watched him. That is, that's, we affirm this is him. Of a truth, this fellow also was with him. He is a Galilean. And Peter said, man, see, America's not the first one that said, hey, man, what do you think? No, he's using man himself, ain't he? <clears throat> and Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he, was yet, while he yet spake, the cock crowed or the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. I don't know how you feel about this, but friends, this, this breaks my heart. And I've been in places before I got saved that because I was raised right. And I, I, I had an opportunity to do right and say right, and I didn't. And I could feel those eyes right there that looked upon me that said, Son, you've been raised in church your whole life. You're saved when you're just a young boy filled with the Holy Ghost at eight. I know you're backslid, but isn't there even a witness left in you? And I, I would walk out condemned because of my own right there the Lord turned and looked upon Peter and Peter remembered the word of the Lord how he had said unto him before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice and Peter went out and wept bitterly the people that won't go to heaven are those that will not be converted something happens at this point in Peter's life instead of hi-hatting God now he recognizes that God through Jesus saw him what was going to happen the same night and that's why he told him Peter after you're converted do something strengthen the brethren and so Peter he wept bitterly he repented and I mean from that day forward they killed him living for God you never see him bow to that lostness again he makes up his mind they may kill me but if they do I am going on with Christ so what I'm showing you is that the flesh your flesh and mine has a voice of its own there's an old song we sing sometime it says without him I could do nothing and without him I'd surely fail without him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail and then it starts Jesus oh Jesus Lord we need you today Woo! Not just 2,000 years ago, but friends, we need Jesus this morning. Your family needs Jesus. Your children needs Jesus. Your friends need Jesus so bad because without him, we're so lost and so undone. But with him, we've got such hope. So I beg you to look your life over it. Know the flesh has a voice of its own and it needs to be said to your flesh voice. I want to get this right, but in the Spanish it's callete. Yeah. 
That means shut up. <laughs> you got to tell your flesh, you shut up. You're not too sick to go to Walmart, but you're too sick to go to church. Tell the flesh to shut up and say, I may be too sick to go to Walmart, but I'm going to the house of God. Oh, I love... Wow! How many still in the building? There's a difference, friend, when the flesh is shut down and the spiritual man gets to say, Amen! Amen to what God said! Amen to his love! Amen to his mercy! Amen to his encouragement! Woo! Amen to conversion. Conversion that keeps me from being just a cotton stripper. Now I'm pumping water. Woo! All for Jesus. Woo! I want you to make it to heaven so bad it, it weighs on my heart to see people just, ah, I can take it or leave it. That spirit won't go up. If it's not in your heart that if they cut my head off, I'm going to heaven with Jesus. You've got to, you've got to make a break from lostness. Run. Jump inside that circle of Jesus Christ is spoken of in Acts chapter 17. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. We're staying with Jesus. Woo! If I don't have a penny, I'm staying with Jesus. If I'm a rich man, I'm staying with Jesus. Whoa, whatever happens. I'm staying. I'm staying with Jesus. Hmm. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, it shows the people that don't go to heaven. We're not going to read that passage, but it's so powerful because it designates in Galatians Chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, it says, these are the people that actually says that don't go to heaven. Yeah. It's out there. <laughs> and then in John chapter 6, in verse number 63, I'd like for us to read this. <clears throat> it is the Spirit that quickeneth. The Spirit of God is what quickens us and opens our heart of us and says, Whoa, I didn't know I needed Jesus so bad. And all of a sudden your heart is like, I need that. You know, I've come home lots of times and I wasn't even thinking about something, nothing. You know, I mean, I was getting my horse turned loose and all that stuff and thinking about tomorrow and getting another pony up. And I walk in the house and Connie's got something cooked. And man, I mean, when I open the door, it's like, I feel good. <laughs> Boy. That's the way Jesus is. If you stay around him, all of a sudden the door just opens and says, oh, I need you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you for loving on me. Woo! The second thing I want to talk to you about, about this, the flesh has a voice of its own. Number one, who will miss the rapture? Those that's not converted. And number two, what portion of the believer must die and what portion of the believer must come to life? There's a great confusion here because of preachers that lie like a dog trotting. Anybody that says what this Bible says makes a difference between right and wrong. Amen. And any, any believer that knows what the Bible says has to say that if I get saved, I belong to Jesus Christ. And nothing in my past is going to be carried over in a suitcase into my future. All the baggage is not only condemned, but it is left behind. What I was back there, I am no more. Put the scripture up, uh, Brother John, if you would, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 17. This just simply says, anybody that gets this Jesus, something happens. If any man be in Christ, something happens. He is a new creature. You've been created fresh. And look at, look at these words, all the baggage. What do you do with the baggage? It passes away. And behold, all things are become new. You don't get your mouth washed out with soap. You get your heart washed out with blood. Because the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you leave... 
your time of salvation with Christ and go back and, and you're the same cussing, hateful, smart aleck person. You don't know the Jesus that I'm talking to you about. You need to run back and get converted. You may have got religion, but you didn't get saved. You say, I've been baptized. I'm adding the devil's been under somewhere. I don't know. But I will tell you, friends, if you get saved, you're going to be a different p- person because the Bible does not lie. You're going to be a new creature. And so what, what's got to die and what must live? So the flesh has a voice of its own and the, the voice of the flesh is domineering. You're thinking your voice, I'm hungry. You ever heard that voice before? And what about this? When somebody comes by and you don't want to go, you know what you say? I'm so tired. The next, by, the next person comes by and that's what you want to do. And you say, I can't wait to get my boots on. <laughs> the voice. Yeah. The voice of the flesh has a voice of its own. And so the things of God is dealt with with the same way. And so we got to say, Part of me has got to die for him to live. I can't say I'm going to the cotton club and going to the church at the same, that, that, don't, that don't make good nonsense. There's got to be a way I can get this out. And so if I stay with him, I've got to do something. I've got to hear his voice. The flesh must die for the spirit to live. Seven times in those eight verses, it says flesh, 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 flesh. <laughs> That's our enemy. Yeah, but spirit, 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 spirit. That is our lie. So we let go one side and we hang on. We hang on to the other. In Romans chapter six and verse number six, I'm not gonna keep you here all night, but just a little while. <clears throat> Romans chapter six and verse number six, look at these words, knowing this. How many here knows how to make homemade ice cream? I'm going home with you right after... <laughs> Heard seen it. Oh, the boy, the, the hands went down. <laughs> Some of them said, No, not me. I don't know. <laughs> Knowing this, friends, if you really know what the Bible says, something happens. Knowing this, that what? Our old man is crucified with him. Now, just because I'm still the same Danny Williams doesn't mean that the old man has not died. The body's the same, but there's been a renewal on the inside. And that old spirit is broken. I don't want to go to the cotton club. I'm so thankful I got saved. I got freed. I got renewed. I got born again. The song says born again. There's been a change. There, there's been a change in me. Born again. Just like Jesus said. Born again. All because of Calvary. I'm glad, so glad. Woo! Whenever they say church and you go, you're backslid. That's true. If you feel that way about church, you're slid back. The devil and the flesh is saying, the easy chair means more to me than going to the house of God. Friends, if Jesus went to Calvary for us at a not too good a time, where are we in our life to say, oh, it don't make no difference. It makes a difference. The attitude means everything to Christ. I know there's times when you're really sick, not very often, but every once in a while. The rest of the time, you're faking. Uh, okay, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be nice. Help me here. Knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, why? That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. I heard a story one time, this, this lady said, hey, you gotta get up, we're going to church. She said, I, I'm not going. Yes, you're going. No, I'm not going. Yeah, you got to go to church. Says, what, what's the matter? Says, nobody down there likes me. I don't like nobody down there. Says, you got to go to church. You're the preacher. <laughs> well, I've never been there. There has been a few times that my heart was broke. But I tell you, I love you people to death. And I'm, if you don't come, I want to I come anyway because I'm hoping you're going to be here if you can. It's important. Sometimes the flesh says, that's just me and I can't change. You're lying. Jesus says, there's nothing in you that can't change. Nothing. I don't care what you've been hooked on or what you're, no, you can be free if you want freedom. You can be free. 
I remember just growing up that every once in a while some cotton would come up that wasn't in the row. And to me, it was like, don't kill it, Daddy. He said, Dad, you got, he said, son, you got to plow that up where the other can live. Because some of that cotton just comes up volunteer. And friends, as you go through life, there's going to be some stuff from your old world that just voluntarily comes up. And when you see it, you got to say, if that stays, I can't live. That's got to be plowed up. And I mean, the same cotton that was making our living, if it, was, if it wasn't in the row, in line. How long has it been since you've been in line? Yeah, we got a whole world out there doing Jesus their own way and they're missing. They're missing what this book teaches. And friends, we got to get in line with this gospel or we don't go to heaven. And so make it, make it easy on yourself and, and decide, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to live for God and I know what must die in me. Me must die that he lives. Nobody said it better than John the Baptist. The disciples come to him and says, hey, you know that guy you baptized? The guy that was real wanted you and all that and loved your ministry guess what he's baptizing himself now and John said didn't I tell you from the start that I'm not the Christ and that he is I want you to behold the Lamb of God I must decrease and he must increase Oh, thank you, John, for telling us the story that needs to be heard in our spirit. Not me, Lord, but you have your way in our life. God, you do it. So our flesh is crazy. Sometimes we've got to plow the cotton up that's out of line. Sometimes the flesh says, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm sick, I'm bored. I don't want to. Nobody will even know. I'll do it and ask God to forgive me. The flesh is a mean motor scooter. And if you turn him loose, he can decapitate everybody else. Your tongue can be sharp, sarcastic, hateful, arrogant, or it can build people. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can love people. You can help them through the storms of time. Not because you're anything, but because Jesus is everything. He's everything that we have to do with. And so we build on the glory of God in our life. Sometimes <clears throat> the same voice that's been there, the voice of the flesh, that's given you guidance from time to time, from the time you was born to right now. <clears throat> That same voice keeps talking because it says, when we fast, when we fast, I'm not talking about being fast in a car like, warm. I'm talking about when you say, you know what, I'm going to set aside this day and give it to the Lord. I'm not going to eat or drink today. I'm fasting. You know what your flesh says? It screams like a pig hung under the gate. I'm so hungry. I mean, you can go a day without eating. It don't kill you, but it's all in the brain. And you want a Snicker bar. And you can't wait to drink a gallon of Dr. Pepper. Or something. Give me something. You know why? The flesh, the flesh is working on us. And so, what's got to die? The old way. When we pray, you know what our flesh says? I don't want to. Now, mine does. Maybe I'm the only one. No, I, I could, I'll do something else. I've done that before. When we study. Study the Word of God. Oh, we can, we can go on, uh, what's, that, what's that deal, Connie? She won't tell me, but what, what is that deal? You, you buy everything off of? Amazon. Oh, Amazon. I can go on Amazon for 40 years. And, oh, now I know what she's thinking. Yeah, you can go to the, to the cell and go. <laughs> but to go and study the Bible and see what the Bible says, you know what your flesh says? No, 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 no. And so you got to say flesh, shut up. Shut up. We're studying the word of God. My spiritual man must have some gospel. I've got to pray. I've got to study. I need to fast from time to time. I know, and, and how many times we quote it? We know this, we know this about the Bible. Much study is awareness of the flesh. Well, wear your old flesh out, you saw. <laughs> wear it out. Get in there and study. And then the devil, when you finally got by, you know what the devil says? Okay, now you've done enough now. <laughs> You're righteous. <laughs> You're finally righteous. Have, am I the only one that's ever heard that voice? Whoa! I mean, he's working on us all the time. And so that voice has got to die that Jesus can live in us. The Waddingtons 
sang here several years ago. They sang a song and Brother Rosas has sang it on several occasions. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Woo, man. Your flesh, it just wilts down, but your spiritual man rises up and says, I love Jesus. I want Jesus. I want to hear that voice coming. I want to know he's talking to me. And friends, you've got to know as we stand together, there is a voice you can never listen to and trust, and that's the voice of your flesh. You can't trust that. But you can trust the voice of Jesus Christ. He loves you. You're here this morning, not by accident or by chance. Before the world was built, Jesus knew you was going to be in this building. He knew I was going to be here. And he planned this occasion for us. <clears throat> We're going to be responsible to God. And it can be good. We can respond and say, Lord, I heard your voice talking to me. And I'm following as close as I can get we was roping some cattle one day while going out across the pasture, four or five big old yearlings that got away. One of the boys that come back, I said, did you rope one? He said, no, but I was knocking that boy's tracks out in front of me. He said, if he had missed, I'd have cracked him. <laughs> Don't you want to do that? Don't you want to, Lord? Let me follow so close. I'm just knocking your track out. You take a step. I'm, I'm putting my foot right there where you been. Hand me this morning and say, Pastor, I recognize I have a voice called the flesh, and it bothers me. And I, I'm asking God today to help me silence that voice and let the voice of God Almighty through his spirit talk to me. If you're here and you don't know Jesus and you hear his voice, he's going to invite you to receive him as personal Savior and fill you with Holy Ghost presence and power. Already some, I feel like in this earth, been healed today because they just reached out to God. But these altars are open. I'd like for you to come this morning and say, I know there's a voice there, Lord, and I'm trusting you. Lord, to let, let me hear the voice of the Holy Ghost.